What's up guys? We are back with another Turtles review and we are taking a look at the last, I, I hope, the last Turtles release for the year. So we're of course talking about a NECA release. We've got our hands on the Splinter and Baxter Stockman 2-pack. So another 2-pack, or another release anyway, uh, from Target that was supposedly delayed until 2021 and yet here they are now showing up a week or two before the end of the year. So yeah, who knows what's going on, but they're out there, so get to hunting, I suppose. We've got them here in the standard two-pack style packaging for the Toon line. So you've got the green and yellow motif figures in the window with just a million accessories, and then you've got some Toon style artwork of each figure or each character down in the corners, product shots on their respective sides, and then you've got a big product shot on the back, as well as that uh, bio that they throw on there for turtles in general. So let's do it. Let's pull them out and take a look. And here we go, out of the package are Cartoon, Splinter, and Baxter Stockman. I am quite certain that a lot of folks are really, really interested in this set specifically for Splinter because, well, he completes a team. Uh, he completes, I mean, to a very high degree, a team. We finally have Casey, April, all the Turtles, and Splinter. We have, we have a complete unit, really. But I really, really can't get over this guy right off the bat. Baxter looks awesome. Like, he jumped right out of the screen. Not that Splinter doesn't, but uh, this guy's kind of blowing my mind. So let's get started, see what these guys can do, see how they move around. We're going to take a look at them individually because, of course, they are very different from each other. Uh, specifically, Splinter, he is very different from a lot of figures in this line so far. So we're going to start with him, and then we will get acquainted with the fly. So Splinter is kind of interesting when it comes to articulation, but not because he's limited or anything. It's, it's just interesting in what they did to make him... Honestly, a lot more mobile than I expected. So, as far as moving him around, you've got a head that does have an indep independently articulated neck. So the head itself can look up slightly. He looks down pretty good, and then you can rock side to side and then full rotation. But the neck moves too. So you can go a little bit further down if you hit that neck. And then it does aid a bit when it comes to looking up. He doesn't look super far up, but he sort of... He sort of coasts upward, and then, of course, it can move a little bit and help with the tilt. The arms go out at the shoulders. He is, of course, wearing soft goods, so you will have to deal with those, but it doesn't really pose too much of an issue except for when you want to go forward and backward, and he basically goes all the way, you know, you can get him to go all the way up if you kind of crook the arm correctly. He does have double-jointed elbows with pretty solid range of motion. I mean, really, they go all the way up, there's really no problems there. You've got rotation and hinges at the wrist. He does have a, a diaphragm cut. Of course, you can't really see it, but it's there. So he can swivel side to side. He's got a little tilt forward and backward, but it's mostly just for rotation, but it does allow for a wide range of movement. Of course, you know, the, the kimono does get in the way a little bit, but it's not, it's not overly hindering or anything. The legs, however, are really interesting. So they are the new, new style that NECA's using. So you've got the ball that's on the socket there, and then it connects to the thigh. So it allows him to kick forward about that far. It allows him to kick backward, but it allows him to go out really far too, because this is actually going upwards into the abdomen. It's not straight through the crotch. It goes at an angle upwards. So you can go that way, and then there is rotation there. You do have double jointed knees. Uh, it's a it's a pinless knee at the top and a pinned knee at the bottom, and it allows you to go back about that far. Pretty good range. And then, of course, it rotates at the top of that knee. So you do have rotation there. We've also got our hinges, and you've got rotation, or not rotation, but rocker, rather, at those ankles. You've got your toe hinges, so it goes up and down. And then we've also got our tail. So it's actually at the bottom of the figure. It's not sticking out of his back. So it goes up and down. You can rotate it in there, and it has a bit of a bendy wire. It's not super, super bendy. It probably starts right about here, and then you can crook it around and move it and all that stuff. So he does move uh, pretty well. Honestly, I have no issues with any of his articulation. If anything, I am surprised that he does move this well. I think NECA kind of went out of their way to ensure that he is uh, as formidable of an opponent as the Turtles are. In the same way they kind of went over the top with him for articulation, he very much looks almost perfect, really. This thing looks tremendously close to screen accurate. Granted, a lot of the figure is cloaked in a, in a kimono, 
but what it is is exposed is really well sculpted and he does have a decent amount of paint applications it's not a ton uh, it's certainly not as much as most other figures in this line goes but the kimono plays a big factor for this figure so you've got of course the kind of bisected design so you've always got the lighter bit on the front and the darker bit on the back so you do have paint on his face up top you've got it on his hands and you've got some on his feet he doesn't really have much underneath his kimono uh, I'll show you real quick you know he doesn't have a whole lot there which is fine I mean he really doesn't need it I don't think there's no real reason to go that far when you're not going to really see it anyway unless you want a naked splinter on your shelf uh, he does have a painted tail so you've got all of the little uh, links in it almost that's what it sort of looks like I do like the fact that he has the the bendy wire but I would have been fine if it didn't have it because of the the, the positioning that it comes in so it looks really good uh, before you realize because I didn't notice at first that he had a bendy wire in there so it's, it was a nice little surprise the wraps on his feet are really well painted Again, it's just sort of an off-white cream color with some black line work, but it does look good. And every bit of this figure is absolutely covered in a furry detail, so there's no real smooth spots on him except for maybe his claws and like the toenails. But otherwise, he he very much has a tremendous amount of detail. The paint that he does have is really well done, and of course, he is covered in the kimono, which I think looks really nice as far as coloring. You do have the little uh, emblems design on the chest. He does have a little bit of a belt. It's just sort of like a, a little ribbon type thing with a knot in it. Nothing too crazy. Uh, if you wanted to get fancier with it, I'm sure you could. But I do like that. I do like it from a color perspective. If I have one little gripe about the kimono, it's that I wish, and it's more of a wish thing. I wish there was a slit right here that the uh, the tail could go through, so it sort of draped over him a little bit better. Otherwise, it's kind of a non-issue. It's really a minor thing at best. And then he has uh, what is really a fantastic, a fantastic head sculpt. I think he looks really, really good. And you've also got, surprise, surprise, because we didn't talk about it, he does have an articulated jaw. So I wanted to talk about it here so you can kind of get an idea of what's in there. So he does have a really well-painted mouth. There's a big pink tongue in there with a lot of paint. There is quite a bit of paint in this really small area compared to a lot of the rest of the figure. And then, of course, he's got the two uh, little teeth sticking out the end with his black nose and just the very rat-like uh, head sculpt so it's really long and kind of bulbousy at the end but he looks really good I think they did a fantastic job on the sculpt as far as the head goes and then of course paint application so he's got a lot of that light dark aspect of it for the cell shaded look up top because you really see you really see the head I mean it's 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 the one area that's uh that's very much uncovered by by the soft goods and I think they did a great job here it very much looks again just like he jumped right out of the show now, this little dude is very normal while at the same time being very unique from other figures because he's still mostly your normal kind of humanoid character, but he, of course, has his own little quirks because he has wings and he has the extra set of arms and he has a jacket overlay or a sweater overlay on the torso. So as far as moving him around, you've got a head that can look up a little bit. He can look down pretty good. You've got your tilt side to side and then full rotation. Arms go out at the shoulders. They rotate. They are kind of tight at the shoulders. Just They're just tight. They're not in a breaking kind of tight way. Just they are snug. You've got your double jointed elbows and they have crazy range. Like that's super far. He does have maybe a weird looking uh, elbow joint there just because of how long that is. But at the same time, it's very functional. And then those also rotate as usual. You do have uh, hinges and rotation at the wrist. The hinges are kind of minimal just because of the fact that he's got kind of like cuffs on the end of his uh, sweater there, but they do work well enough. You've got a ball peg that goes up into the torso. It doesn't really do a great deal. He goes backwards a little bit, forwards a little bit, tilt side to side, and then rotation. It's mostly, again, because he has that kind of overlay there that it sort of gets in the way. Legs go out about this far. They kick forward all the way. They kick backwards a good bit. You can uh, twist up there. You do have your double jointed knees and just like Splinter, he's got a uh, pinless joint at the top and a pinned joint at the bottom. And then you've got your rocker and you've got hinges down at those ankles. Now he does of course have some extra stuff going on back here though. So you've got rotation and hinges on each wing to flap them really. And then you've got hinges and rotation at the extra arms with like the kind of clawed hands at the end. So he is pretty well articulated. Frankly, there's not really anything that I truly want to complain about on this guy when it comes to how he moves. He is a little bit limited at the torso, but otherwise he is, he is very mobile for such a small figure. Where Baxter truly shines though, at least for me anyway, is, is the looks because 
I'll be honest, there is not a single thing on this figure that I really want to gripe about when it comes to uh, his appearance, the design, the sculpt. I think he looks he looks almost perfect. I mean, I don't like to use that word. I have said it a decent bit lately with Turtles stuff, but he looks really, really good. This is one of probably my favorite examples of when NECA can just destroy the look for the cartoon line. Like, they absolutely just kill it. It's perfect. They've done so much to make him pop. I mean, he is he's so unique here in this line. He is, of course, very small by comparison uh, to all the other figures. He is of course, 100% unique because he is so small, but then he also has a lot of parts that you're not going to see elsewhere. So you've got things, you know, like the wings, like these little arms on the back, which look fantastic. The the kind of royal purple almost uh, looks really good. It's super saturated and really bright and vibrant. The line work, as far as the little cuts to accentuate some of that sculpt uh, for the black line edging looks really good. Of course, he does have that kind of bisected design that we see. Uh, so he is darker on the back than he is on the front. And he's uh, kind of like an interesting way this time because he's white on his on his sweater there. So he's got gray on the backside to make it look like he's kind of uh, almost kind of cast in shadow, which I, I like really well. The yellow for the bow tie absolutely pops. And there's just a lot of there's a lot of conflicting colors on this guy. So he very much stands out. You've got greens and blacks and grays and browns and whites and purple. I mean, there's just a lot of different stuff going on with this guy. I think the, the wings in particular are really good. They do have a lot of sculpt on them. So it's not just a flat surface that happens to have black line work. Uh, there is sort of an edging in there. So you can sort of feel all of that, sort of just the texture to it. And then he's capped off by, I mean, what is... Probably one of my favorite head sculpts that we've gotten in quite a while because it's humongous, at least as far as the size of the figure goes. You know, it's kind of a bulbousy head, but he's got this huge, huge shock of hair on the back. But then it's sort of, you know, contrasted by the fact that you've got this big fly face on the front and he's got those humongous red eyes. And I love the way they did the sort of uh, shading for the kind of glossiness on the on the eyes. You've got that, sh that hit of white, and then you've got the hit of gray on the other side to make it look like he's being hit by some light. And I think it works really well. And of course, it all contrasts to that kind of teal green color that's on the mouth. And he has his, his mouth just slightly open. It doesn't move like Splinters does, but that's okay. I think he looks, uh, I think he looks fantastic. There's, there's so much to, to really see with this guy because there is a lot of different stuff going on, different body parts, different style. You've got monster feet, you've got kind of claw arms on the back, wings, the crazy head sculpt, and then you've got all these normal human parts to make a really, really unique figure. Now for some size comparisons, here we go with some NECA stuff to start with. So more stuff that's in the Toon line. So we've got Splinter here and Baxter with Leo and with Baby Shredder because why not? So you can see that they're, they're small figures to begin with. The Turtles aren't big figures though, so they, they, they don't exactly tower over, over these guys. So what about something that might? Uh, let's move Leo aside, and here is our Rocksteady figure, and you can see, I mean, there's a huge dis uh, discrepancy between them. There is a lot of, of size uh, between all of these, so you've got you've got a rather large bruiser type of character with our rather diminutive rat and fly. And then another NECA tune figure that I think deserves a lot of comparison, specifically to Splinter, just because of, well, their history. So there there they are with our Toon Shredder, just to give me an idea of what they look like. But of course, you know, we have to do some stuff out of outside of the NECA lines. So let's move both of our Shredders out. And here they are with Super 7 uh, Leo. Let's get him in there. And you can see that just like with the NECA Toon figure, the Super 7 stuff is pretty comparable in terms of height. They have a little more bulk than the Super 7 figure or than the NECA figures do, but they, they scale pretty similarly. And then here they are with uh, the ever-present Mandalorian. So we've got our capeless, for some reason again, uh, regular Mando. And you can see they definitely have uh, some scaling oddness when it comes to this guy, but they aren't necessarily supposed to scale to him. You can see that they uh, have some bulk, but in general, they are still really, really small figures. But I think they look really good within their own line. I don't know how much they need to really scale to other things, but just to give you an idea of what they look like next to other stuff. And then maybe one more. Uh, let's do a non-NECA 7-inch figure, just to give you an idea of something that's maybe slightly going to skew a little bit larger. So here they are with the Filmation Skeletor for one last thing. This is the Mattel version, not the Super 7, but again, they're the same figure essentially, save for some deco changes. So there you go, give you an idea of what some of these figures look like next to our new Nekatoon stuff.
Of course, there are a few other comparisons we can do, and I'm going to stick to doing NECA to Super 7 for this video. So we've got our NECA tune, and we've got our Super 7. And these are the ones that I think deserve the most comparison, just because of the fact that they are the two that, that sort of go together. So we've got our toy line that came with the cartoon. So you've got your cartoon version, and you've got your modern interpretation of the vintage figure. And, I mean, there's not a lot to compare to here. They, they are similar in a number of ways. You know, the foot wraps, which are not even the same color, the kimono, which is still very different, and then their overall design. But aesthetically, they're very different. They are, of course, quite different in articulation as well. I think NECA kind of wins out a little bit uh, when it comes to articulation this time around, just because of how they kind of handled the hip joints and then the double-jointed elbows and things like that. I do still love my Super 7 figure because, of course, there is a tremendous amount of nostalgia. But this guy is a, is a really faithful interpretation of the cartoon, just like this guy is a really faithful interpretation of the vintage. So kind of two halves of the same whole, but not necessarily something that truly needs to be compared aesthetically. It's just more of a here's what you get in one versus here's what you get in another. The same thing goes for Baxter though, but this is a very different situation. Splinter looks similar in terms of overall approach. Same color kimono, the overall same style of character. These two look entirely different. Of course, there is obvious some, obviously some similarities. You know, you've got the, the extra purple arms, you've got the wings, you've got the big bulbousy head, but this is a very cartoon interpretation of Baxter, and this is a very Playmates interpretation of Baxter. So they definitely kind of go together in terms of that era, but overall they are very far removed. It's one of those instances where the toy does not necessarily match up with the show very well at all. And that's that's a that's a thing when it comes to the, the Turtles uh, vintage line and the cartoon, but of course it's very apparent once you get them physically in front of you side by side. So we've got, again, the same thing with Splinter. We've got a really good interpretation of the cartoon and we've got a really good interpretation of the vintage figure here made again. So, you know, two halves of the same kind of thing. Not a lot to compare to, but it is cool to get them stacked up next to one another. Now, when it comes to accessories, I think I'm actually at the point where I'm going to say that I think there's too much in these boxes uh, because there's way too much stuff in here. And, and I say that in the sense that, you know, don't stop doing that. But I mean, there is a lot of weird stuff and a lot of like kind of esoteric stuff in here. We are, we're at the point where I'm not really remembering certain accessories at this point because there's stuff in here that doesn't really ring a bell to me. Uh, I'm sure someone will know, but there's only so much nerd stuff I can truly keep up with. And some of this stuff is, is kind of out there. So we'll start with the easy stuff. They have extra hands. So we've got uh, four extra hands for Baxter. He comes with a set of uh, trigger finger hands. So you've got a, an extra set of trigger finger hands, and then you've got a set of uh, gripping hands. So you've just got the four varying styles of gripping hands here. Splinter comes with five. So he's got uh, this kind of whatever in the world of this kind of hand is supposed to be. You've got a uh, kind of martial arts, martial arts style pose hand. You've got a gripping hand. You've got another gripping hand. And then you've got a finger pointing hand. So you've got a number of various options when it comes to Splinter. Baxter's just sort of a more standard fare, but again, he has everything he needs. We've got some really goofy stuff, though, going forward. So we've got one of my more favorite accessories is the transmutation gun. So this, of course, is Baxter's, and he uses this to transmutate things. So this thing has uh, what is probably one of my favorite paint accents on any on any accessory in a while. You've got the little dial on here that sort of picks what animal he's going to, to mutate them into. So you've got, you know, like a rabbit and uh, what is like a donkey and a fly and a turtle and a cat and all that stuff. Sculpt on the gun itself is really good too, but in terms of that little attention to detail, I do really like that. And to go along with that, we have some more specific stuff. We have got the Doku plant. So this is this was sent to April, right, to like knock her out or something like that. So again, a very a very specific and random almost accessory. I mean, it fits with Baxter, but still. And then you've got the uh, little Mikey gerbil once he gets transmutated. So it's just a uh, kind of little brown gerbil, and he's got the orange bandana on there with the white belly. So one of those you know weird little things. Maybe one of my favorite accessories we've gotten period in a long time though is the transmutated. 
uh, shredder fly. And the detail on this thing for how small this is is pretty wild. So you've got even like his little pauldrons on there. You've got the cape that drapes over him. And then you've got those big bulbous eyes. I'll see if I, as best I can to get a close up on this. But this thing is awesome. I absolutely love this. It goes very nicely with the fact that we just got uh, baby shredder also. Uh, so you've got that. And then we've got this, which is definitely something I was really hoping to see. You know, obviously we've known for a while, but you've got the pan dimensional spaceship computer. And this guy had a name, I think. It was like Z or something, wasn't it? Something stupid. But this guy uh, is, of course, the, you know, the little uh, computer. And in the show, he gets like a body or something at one point. But you've got the little lenticular on there to give him his expression. So you've got like a surprised and a happy and then like a, a dastardly looking one or something. Sculpt on this thing is really nice. I mean, this looks exactly like the show. And what's interesting is that it has a port to be plugged into something. I, I think I remember seeing this in the NECA cartoon Dio, the one that went up for pre-order. I did not get that because uh, I don't really know what I would do with it. So I don't know if I don't know if this attaches to that or not, but it was I'm pretty sure it was in a window or something. So maybe it does. Maybe they changed it so you could throw that in there. Either way, uh, this does look fantastic. I'm really happy that we got this because it goes really specifically with Baxter, uh, you know, in one of his more important episodes. Now for Splinter, we've got a lot of stuff as well. So we've got a little uh, rat for him. So you've got this little dude here. Nice little detail on him. So you've got that pink tail, gray fur, and you got the even got the whiskers on there. So first, even this little stuff like that, NECA, NECA does what they can to make it as uh, close as possible. We've got an art book, which has all of our classic artists in there. So Leonardo, Donatello, Michelangelo, and Raphael for Splinter to get his inspiration from. We've got another book, which is just a book. And I'm sure this is something I should be remembering, but I do not. So you've got just a book here with some uh, gold accents on the binding. Sculpt looks really good, though. You've got a scroll, which has some sort of language on it. Probably something I should be remembering. Someone let me know. But that's, this is really cool. I do like that. We've got this medallion. This is another thing that I vaguely think I should know what it is, but I do not. So you've got a little yin-yang medallion that you can put uh, over Splinter's head here and have him wear it. Drape it over him like that. We've got his walking stick or his cane, which looks really good. It's a nice gnarled, gnarled wood approach. Nice black line work on there. We've got the pistol with uh, just a little bit of paint on it, not a whole lot. It's very, very, uh, very, very bland when it comes to sculpt, especially in comparison to Baxter's. But I do like that this was included. And then we've got the sword, which has the flame effect. And I do remember this. I remember Splinter not looking uh, quite like this, like he was in like armor or something when this is worn or when this is used, if I can remember correctly. But this does look really good. The flame effect is nice as well. It's got uh, it's got that great translucent orange uh, on it. And then the last thing we get, because of course this isn't enough, that's all. That's everything we got that as far as something anybody can hold or, you know, something that's small. We get this. We get a dojo floor. So this thing should be tucked in the bottom of your of your tray. And you've got the dojo floor that you can sit Splinter and the boys on. And this is, it's not paper. It's kind of like a foam almost. Uh, so it's done up uh, with, you know, like the little bamboo thatching on there. And this is really cool. Like I do like the, I do like this. It's something that uh, I can easily use and just anybody can use this, throw it on your shelf and you've got a little place for Splinter to sit and meditate, or you've got a place for him to, to have the training and the sparring. So this is a really cool inclusion. I do like that. You know, there is a ton of stuff in here and I've talked for a very long time about accessories already, but there is so much here. There's more than you're ever going to be able to utilize, especially at one go. That's where I think that there might be almost too much, but at the same time, keep it coming. I'm never going to be upset. We have too much. There's just, there's a lot to unpack when it comes to this set, uh, both literally and figuratively. So yeah, this is a winner of a set. There's not much to say otherwise. Uh, I could rattle on and on and on about how much I really like these figures, but it comes down to the fact that they're both really well done and they are crammed crammed with accessories. I mean, if you actually listen to the entirety of me talking about accessories, you know just how much is in this box. Literally everything they really could have given you uh, is here. There's almost too much. Again, they just they just went all out on that stuff. I think Splinter looks fantastic. He moves well. Soft goods are nice. Baxter is probably the star of the, the show for me just because, I mean, he looks pretty perfect. It's, it's a fantastic little figure. I love everything about this version of Baxter. I think this figure is an incredible portrayal of him in plastic, and uh, he 
he comes with a great array of very unique and specific accessories that uh, just really showcase what NECA does when it comes to giving you more than you asked for. So that's going to do it for this look at the NECA Toys Toon Splinter and Baxter Stockman. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.